Hi there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host for Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. Here's some words from the book Taking Flight by Kelly Ray Roberts. By the summer of 2005, my intuitions, the whispers of my life, grew louder. I was jealous of my husband, who seemed to have found his own passion. I wanted to feel that rush of life, too. I wanted the trust of my heart, the energy of life. I wanted the wings. Eventually, when I got quiet with myself, when I peeled away the distractions of my everyday life, when I sat with the questions and longings of my heart, I found a new beginning point. What was my life telling me all this time in the spaces of waking and dreaming? It was this, use your hands make art, have more fun, be less serious, explore your creativity. But the loudest, most pesky of whispers had nothing to do with living a creative life at all. Instead, it was this, start running. Start running? Listening to our whispers doesn't always give us the creative clarity we think it will. I certainly wasn't wishing for a life of running, In fact, I was a bit stunned at this revealed whisper. Running. All that soul-searching, whisper-listening, digging deeper stuff to discover an inner voice that said to start running. Really? As our whispers sometimes insist that we do, I went with it. Now, at the point of my life, anyone... Now, in this point in my life, anyone who knew me knew I wasn't an athlete. I could barely hike three miles without complaints of achy joints joints and breathlessness. But for me, I needed to do this thing that my whispers were insisting I do. So when a dear friend encouraged me to join a training program for a half marathon, I signed up with caution, but with an optimism and a renewed sense of joy that beginning something huge gave me. I set out with a goal to run 13.1 miles of one very hilly half marathon. This is what whispers are all about, challenging your spirit to listen, even if it means doing something you never thought you could do, especially if it means doing something you never thought you could do. You must do it. The whispers, your instincts, will show you the way. Even if it's not clear at first, you will find your wings. Surprisingly, that summer of training for the half marathon changed everything about my life. With each and every training run, I discovered that we learn the most about ourselves when we do the thing we never thought we could do. We unearth our potential, our limits, our heart's distance. The whispers get nurtured and our spirits soar. What is the one thing you never thought you could do? Maybe it has something to do with living the creative life, and maybe it doesn't. That's okay. The point is to pinpoint something, anything, that you've always wanted to do, but for some reason or another, never did, perhaps out of fear. Is it something simple like signing up for a poetry class when you could have read your poetry aloud? Maybe it's something physical like biking or hiking 10 miles. Or maybe it's something scarier, like telling the truth about something you've been harboring. When we actually do the thing we didn't think we could do, something shifts inside of us. We push our boundaries. We find strength in ourselves that we didn't know was there. I've had many friends who have gone through natural childbirth tell me, that they got through that experience with a newfound sense of self, that they surprised themselves with their strength, that they sometimes, for the first time in their lives, felt like they could do anything. It's a rush, an adrenaline of spirit. When I started to run, I began to see myself differently. I wasn't a girl who quit early anymore. I wasn't a girl who always said yes or a girl who felt limited. Instead, I was a girl who had a voice, a joy, 
a smile, a very big dream, and a purpose. With each crossing of a finish line, my spirit soared with the knowledge that I had finally touched down into the root of my own possibility. I had conquered something I never thought I would be able to do. Now my world was opened up. If I could run, then surely I could paint. The only word I can use to describe what I was feeling in those weeks is limitless. When we challenge ourselves to push our boundaries, we perhaps, without intending to do so, shed layers of muck, jealousy, perfectionism, worry, fear, self-doubt. Underneath all these sh shedded layers exits or exists a creative spirit that needs freeing. It's been there all along, buried beneath misguided intentions. I didn't realize it at the time, but with each run, I was shedding all those very same layers myself. With every finish line, especially the half marathon finish line, I was running, fiercely running back toward myself. The self that was artsy, the self that was fearless, brave, quirky, beautifully sensitive, silly, unique. My personal journey through doing the one thing I didn't think I could do taught me the invaluable, life-changing lesson that anything is possible in our lives when we stop denying ourselves the chance to see our own potential. With that huge lesson learned and tucked into the pockets of my heart, I felt free to explore my creative wings, the real whispers of my heart, the ones that suggested I begin painting, to simply begin, to create a space and time to play with paint and paper, to embrace the rawness of a starting point. This is when the world of artful living finally entered my life. It's a small but significant miracle in my life to have recognized and embraced this awakening. The same is possible for you. Listen to your whispers, identify them, follow their truth, hold possibility close to your chest and allow it to step into the light and give your creative spirit a chance. Do the thing that scares you the most. By doing it, you'll give birth to your life's promise and unearth your buried dreams. Rediscover your worth, your potential, your creative spirit. Then go and fly on its wings to places you won't ever want to leave. We want you to take from us. We want you, at first, to steal from us. Because you can't steal. You will take what we give you, and you will put it in your own voice. And that's how you will find your voice. That's how you begin. And then one day, someone will steal from you. Francis Ford Coppola John twelve twenty four twenty eight. Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. If it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. In the same way, anyone who holds on to life just as it is, destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. If any of you wants to serve me, then follow me. Then you'll be where I am, ready to serve at a moment's notice. The Father will honor and reward anyone who, who serves me. Right now I am storm-tossed, and what am I going to say? Father, get me out of this? No, this is why I came in the first place. I'll say, Father, put your glory on display. 
Some thoughts by Eugene Patterson. This is Jesus speaking to the disciples just before Judas betrays him. True to his teaching style, Jesus uses a metaphor to help his disciples get the picture from the world around them. Think about pruning roses, controlling forest fires, letting herbs go to seed, using fertilizer. Sometimes trying to artificially avoid death actually prevents fruitful life. Gardeners know that death provides essential preparation for life to truly thrive. As Jesus faces his suffering and death, he doesn't simply accept it. He models letting go for all of those who follow him as a way to truly receive joy and life. Jesus trusts that whatever he gives away will come back to him a hundredfold. That the purpose of humanity is loving recklessly in full trust and abandonment to the will of God. What is your attitude toward death and suffering, both literal and spiritual? Do you shrink from it in dread and fear? Or do you believe that it will produce life and fruitfulness in you? What are you afraid of losing? Spend some time taking inventory of the things in your life you are most afraid to lose. Whether it is something as simple as time or something as complex as an unhealthy but yet familiar relationship. You have something that you want to keep above the ground and outside of God's reach, if you could. Confess to God your fears and honestly release them to Him. Ask for reckless love that isn't concerned about counting losses. You might not be able to change your whole life today, but you can drop a single kernel of wheat into the ground. What will you give away to make room for new and more abundant life? Thanks so much for stopping by.